Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil product highlight. This one features an unboxing of a new product. So today we have a new timber grow light. And if you followed us along in the YouTube series, we've used timber grow lights the entire way. And we developed a relationship over the last few years, mainly built off the fact that they had a really high quality product, small batch, made with precision by engineers in the United States and it had good warranty. And my customers were having good success with them. So we got a couple of lights, we bought some, they ended up working with us to give us some, and it just started that relationship. And now, with the 10x10 and with the success we have, we've had a number of people say that they really like the Timber Grow lights as well. And there are other manufacturers out there. What I like about them is they're a small business, they supported us since the beginning, and our customers have had really, really good success as far as long-term viability of these and really good customer service. So let's open it and talk about what the differences are in this particular light. We've been using the Cypress, which is a strip model. And this one's gonna be a little bit different. Let's see what we have on the inside here. All right, so here's a card from Timber. Comes with some stickers, and then this is the tool that I'll be using to build it. Packed really nicely. I can't remember a time we've had an issue with our packing, and that's really nice. We've worked with a number of lighting companies, and you know, getting a broken light's no fun. So they do a great job with that. And it helps that the product's really stout. So it comes with really nice cords. One of the things I like about them is everything is top quality. These are all the connectors. They use like marine grade connections. They're not just wired together. They have grommets and rubber seals and everything's really nice. A feature that this uses is multiple drivers. It's a four driver system. This light is gonna be called the Magnolia 4. And there'll be a couple options. This is the four because it has four drivers and it's the most powerful one. Oh, this is pretty cool. So this is a board system. I've been told by Dan over at Timber that this is more efficient, more powerful than ever based on the wattage being used and the output. And so I have high hopes for it, but we've never used it before. Look at that, beautiful. Now, one of the things that I'm seeing right out the gate is that without connecting these units, I could easily hang these as individual lights. What I mean by that is there's a hanger here and there's one here. And I could just hang one of these like this. I could have the other one at an alternating height. Let's talk about the specs though, because that's what a lot of people are gonna be into. If you were to go on the market and just try and buy a light, there's a few places that you can end up. A lot of beginner growers are gonna go on Amazon or they're gonna go on eBay. They're gonna find somewhere where they can get what looks like a very, very low priced light that's of really high quality. And this is kind of like stereo components. You can go find some big subwoofers and a big thousand watt amp, and it might be one one hundredth of the price of what somebody might win a audio competition with. But to the newcomer, they're like, well, look at 200 bucks, I got a whole stereo system. It may not sound at all like it's supposed to. With lighting, it's very much the same. But when you get to a certain level of quality, what we're looking for to make sure that our money is a good investment is the quality of the diodes, the quality of the driver here, that powers it all in the brand name, the warranty that comes along with it, and the manufacturer that builds it. This is a Meanwell driver. This is what powers it. And this one has four of them so that if there was a problem, you could easily individually diagnose it without having the whole grow light go down, swap it out under warranty and get it up and running again. Having the good top name brands, that's what you wanna see. A lot of times online, you may not know, they may be lying to you coming from overseas about the actual name brand, because you may not know this, there's only a few good manufacturers out there that make these LEDs and these diodes. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors and there's a lot of fake products that are on the market because it's fast growing. And what you get out of a product that you pay the, the money for is you get something that lasts a decade or longer, has a really good warranty and will not fail on you and is of better quality. You can get those really cheap grow lights and they might last you a few months, six months, a year, and it might be a stepping stone, but I've seen some really bad uh, soldering, I've seen some really bad builds and some fake components that go out sooner than expected. And so just make sure you do your due diligence. Talk to other growers. Do they like the light? Do they not like the light? I've seen too many people get taken advantage of by the new shiny light. So um, think of that. However, when it comes to new tech, let's talk about the specs. Look for what's newest out there and look to be close to that range. A lot of times when you get to, let's say efficiency, there's gonna be a measurement in here. If you're within that range, that's probably good. To get a little bit better, it might cost a significantly greater amount and the juice may not be worth the squeeze until the technology gets better. So always make sure that you're comparing these. On this particular unit, it's a 660 watt four board light. 
So there's four boards here. These use four Samsung white plus red LED boards. So you can see these little red chips that are in here where our Cypress had eight strips. A little bit different because it's a singular line of those LEDs with a heat sink above it, one strip, where this utilizes a whole bunch of them grouped together. And then it has a big board as the heat sink around it. So that's what a board is versus the strip. They're small enough where it's kind of like a hybrid. The older boards would be one big board for this entire light. I like the idea of having four separate boards. These have four drivers. So each driver is directly above the board, which means it's independently serviceable. You can just take the driver off, send it in, get a new one, have 75% of your light running. And that's significantly better for the home grower not to have it completely turned off. You don't have just a backup light a lot of times. These are the newest Samsung white plus red LED, top bin. And that means the best that's available right now, which is really good to see. There's multiple meanwhile drivers ensuring the maximum uptime. And those come with a five year manufacturer warranty and very high efficacy or efficiency, 2.8 to three U moles per joule. So the 2.8 to three is the number that you should remember. When you go look up the different LEDs that you can buy, there's gonna be an efficacy or an efficiency number there. And what that describes is how much of that energy is being converted into usable light that you can measure directly down. It's all being used, wattage, like it'll burn the energy. Some of it comes off in heat, some of it comes off in light that's not quite as efficient. And so the measure of how good this is per watt of electricity that you're using is based on that efficiency rating of 2.8 to three, which is higher than the Cypress. Um, Samsung built and warrantied these boards. That's pretty cool. So instead of it being a board that's ordered from overseas by a distribution company here that's into the you know, indoor grow and they don't have as many standards to meet, this is built by Samsung on their factory floor and it's warrantied by Samsung, which is pretty cool. It's a five-year warranty and it can also be wired for a controller unit in lieu of a dimmer knob. And it's gonna plug in right here and that'll allow me to reach up and just turn a knob and that will then brighten or dim it. Alternatively, if you're running multiple of these and you have a controller, you can order it through build a soil or through Dan at Timber there at his website and request that your light be built for you with an actual controller input so that your controller can run and dim and, and, and do all the lights on a commercial scale, which is really, really good. The color temperature for this light that we're gonna be running is a 3400K. And if you don't know, you can look up color spectrum and all that. Basically, it's the light wave that you see that looks like a rainbow. It's the measurement of the light wave that plants can use. And so photosynthetically active radiation, or PAR, is the part of the light wave that plants can use. Some light humans can't see, like x-ray, things like that, or some waves. Plants see certain ones as well, and we wanna mimic full spectrum light like the sun gives out. The spectrum this puts out is 3400, making it ideal for full cycle, and additional targeted 660 nanometer diodes, which is the, the red ones here. And those assist especially during flower. The new highest bin version two 660 NM red Samsung diodes are the ones that are used on here. So all Samsung, it's not Samsung this and another brand for the red ones. And part of the reason why I know that Dan did not add the red before on the Cypress was that Samsung didn't make it that way. They had the strips in one method. They didn't have the 660 Samsung diodes on it. So for him to get it, alter it, would it affect the manufacturer warranty. And so he was always after the best quality. Now it's built by them, which is pretty cool to see. Um, and that's everything. So we've got 3400K. We've got the far red in here, which are two things that you'll see out there advertised heavy in the, in the industry. We've got top bins, so they're really high F, uh, as far as efficiency. They're wired, they're soldered properly. All of these you can see when we're looking at like the connection points. If I were to flip this one, you can see that they are zip tied and they are sealed and they all plug together with rubber grommets. They're all the nicest of the connections. That's what I like to see. I don't wanna see loose wires and stuff that I think is gonna fall apart if you shake it around a little bit. And I'm gonna build this one and turn it on so you guys can see what it looks like. Here's where the dimmer switches are, it looks like, and the rest of the components. So when we're done building it, we'll show you what that looks like. I've used the strips more. I've only used the boards once. Dan, if you're watching this, I really appreciate you sending us the lights. Our customers rave about your customer service. So keep up the great work. It makes it really easy for us. But we've got to build both of these. I want to get to it. I want to put it in the 10 by 10 tent. I want to turn it on and show you what that looks like. So be sure to subscribe, like. If you've got questions about this light or any others, let's put them in the comment section here and make sure that we ask them. We've already talked about the stats. I've got the second one right here to open. I'm just going to open it, get all the plastic off, get down to the raw parts and show you how to build it. So from right now, I'm gonna show you a few of the tips because I've already built one that I've picked up so that if this is your first time using it, you bought the light and you wanna follow along with how to build it, this is what you're gonna wanna watch. So here we go. 
Really nice. This is just that aircraft aluminum connector piece. We'll show you where that goes. So I'm just gonna be very gentle on the tape there. You could always just rip the tape apart. You don't have to use a knife. I love this light, by the way. I don't wanna set it right on the LEDs and the wires. So I'll leave it here on the bubble wrap so I can leave it face down. So you see this connector here? This goes into this part that connects all of these drivers together. This is the access point where you can dim it. So when I install the dimmer, I want the dimmer to be in the center facing down and I want these wire connections to be on the inside. There is a logo here and it makes sense that if you put the logo the correct way and connect the light together, the dimmer is going to be underneath. So you can reach up from below the light like this and dim it, turn it on, that kind of thing right here. So I'm going to lay it out and show you how these actually connect because it's really simple. But if you've never done it before, you might be wondering when you get this out of the box. When you go to tighten it and set it up the first time, if any one of these is up or down just slightly, you want to loosen with the tool that it comes with right here on the sides. And that'll allow you to slide this up or down, making sure it's perfectly level here so you build a square frame. Just some tips, sometimes they'll be up a millimeter or down and it won't tighten perfectly. You want to make sure it's all nice and square before you build it. Really, as long as it goes together, the thing's kind of bulletproof. But I wanted you to pay attention to those details and know where to start. See, this is for the dimmer. I'm gonna put this one here. So the dimmer switch is on the inside, right here. Then I'm gonna take this one, find the dimmer, and put that towards the inside. Here's the dimmer wire. They're both facing this end. So I'm going to want to put it right here. All right, so I've got my Allen wrench that came with it. I've got it all arranged how I want. Once you've mounted one side, they're not gonna open anymore. So you can't force it through one side, then force it back through the other. I'm gonna start on this side and I want you to do the same. Dimmer facing up, we'll plug these in later. There's a groove in here, this channel. And I'm gonna line that up with this black screw that you can see right here, but it's not loosened yet. So I just put my finger on the back of the screw, it's loose, holding it. And then I rotate this counterclockwise. My channel is gonna be able to slide right in there and connect, and then I can tighten it back down. I've got to do both sides. Now, this side right here, you can see, what I want to do is loosen this and then I'll tighten that at the end to make sure everything's kind of snug and square. Most of them should be perfect, but you know, they're shipped in the mail. These things can vibrate and change around or get bent or whatever, it's just metal. Now I'm going to want to put this right to the edge. I'll show you on the other one so you can see them all square when I'm done hooking it up, but I want it to be tight to the end of the cap here. And then I'm going to tighten this one since it's already in the right spot. Now a little trick, you don't have to open it all the way, that'll make it less adjusting you need to do right afterwards. So there we go. There we go. Same thing, see how that's just barely off? I could bypass that, it really doesn't matter, by loosening the screw one more revolution. But because I like things to be 90 degree, I'm just gonna loosen this one too. Okay, now I can make this flush. And you can either make it flush and tighten it, or you can put the channel on, then tighten it once it's flush, but I'll wait to really hard tighten it until I'm done. The other one looks like it's 90, like it's really flush, so I'm not gonna worry about that. There we go, smooth now. That's what you want. If you have to force it, either make an adjustment or just know what you're doing, that's all. We've got it all lined up. Now I'm gonna do, I can do the other track. Before I do that, I'm just gonna tighten this down real quick and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I've got these ones already opened up here, so it'll be really easy for me to just Start at one side, and as I mentioned, you can slide this one all the way through. It doesn't have a dimmer in the middle. I want it flush at both ends, which it is. If you're buying a light and it's your first time, you wanna know how many rope ratchets you need to hang it. This one has one holder at each corner, so you need four rope ratchets to hang this one properly. All right, now I'm holding the light like this. You can put your bubble wrap down and you can set it face down, whatever you'd like to do to get everything installed. I've got the power cords here. This will plug into the one connection over to your controller or to your power. That way the light turns on and off however you want it. And these lights will run on 240, 277, 120. So as far as electrical goes, all you need is the right plug and the Meanwell driver is rated for all these different inputs. And so you can basically get the plug that fits for you, plug it in. Most of us though are gonna use these on 120 or in a commercial setting, we'll be using it on 240. The big difference there is the amperage. So if you don't know much about electrical, we have some other episodes where we discuss it, but the amperage, most breakers at home, like a 20 amp breaker. And if you've only got 120, you can only have so many lights, so many amps to connect it. This is what we want to do. It's got a rubber band on here. There's enough slack to plug it in. It's got a marine grade rubber grommet. So I'm just going to plug it in. It's zip tie, but I like to hold it so I get a firm connection with my other hand here. Otherwise I'm pulling on these zip ties and I don't want to put the pressure on it. And I'm just going to push it in until I hear the click. There we go. It's clicked in and locked. And that's it. These can kind of tuck up in here and look real nice. 
but realistically, it's just gonna be floating above my light. I don't really care. And these will plug into each one of these. Plug it in, same thing up here. There we go. We're ready to plug this into the main plug. Pretty good long cord on here, so I can plug this in and lead this out to wherever it needs to go. I'm gonna go hang this inside our 10 by 10. We have multiple educational series that you can follow along on the Build a Soil YouTube channel. If that's something that you're looking for, it's all free, go check it out. Otherwise, as far as these product highlight videos, we just wanna show you how to use it. Maybe you've already bought it and you're just coming back to figure out how to hook it up. We'll do another video in the future where we measure the PAR on this. But if you go to Timber Grow Lights, they've got all the measurements, all the readings, if you don't have your own PAR meter. We've already got one of these lights hooked up. I wanna get you in here and show you what it looks like. So here's the Timber Grow Light. You can see the logo here where we put the dimmer, same thing. I'm gonna dim it and turn it off so you can see underneath here what it looks like. Now watch as it comes on. It might mess with the lighting a little, but here's the red and the white Samsung chips. I'm gonna turn it on right now. That's dim, there's full power. I'm gonna dim it back down. That is the new Magnolia 4 from Timber. I like the shape. I like how easy it is to set up. We'll give you a par reading and all that stuff. If you've got questions, ask them here. We'll be happy to answer those questions. I'm sure there's some detail we've left out. I know a lot of you guys get really weird about every single part that goes into these lights. We're happy to answer any questions. Dan at Timber's got great customer support. You can always reach out to him. They're really helpful in answering questions as well. Thanks for following along the YouTube series, checking out our product highlight. And until then, we'll see you on the next episode.